Hey friends, welcome back. So in today's show, we're gonna talk more about the connections between insulin resistance as a main driver of age-related muscle loss. I came across this fascinating new paper and I wanna share with you some nitty gritty details so that we can all better understand the importance of preserving lean muscle mass as a way to protect and preserve and restore metabolic health that, that is so important as we age. Because as we've talked about before, as you age, naturally you become less glucose tolerant. So you become more metabolically unhealthy just as a fact of living a long life, right? So we want to preserve that metabolic integrity throughout lifespan. And it turns out that preserving the health of your muscle is very important. It protects from all cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, and cancer related deaths. But in this paper, as they describe, Insulin resistance actually turns on or amplifies the rate of acceleration and wasting of muscle, which creates this vicious cycle of more insulin resistance, poor glucose tolerance, and actually uh, increased risk of mortality from age-related muscle loss. In fact, we're going to talk about how the muscle stem cells become sort of tweaked, and as you become more insulin resistant, those stem cells start to turn the muscle cells, these progenitor satellite cells, to cause your muscle cells to behave like fat tissue, like adipocytes. Uh, in fact, individuals who have been diagnosed or have prediabetes or diabetes, their muscle tissue resembles that of age-related sarcopenia. So this is very important. In fact, as you become insulin resistant, and the study has highlighted, there's genes that are called atrogenes. They drive atrophy, okay? So this is really very important uh, when, when it comes to longevity, when it comes to living independently later throughout your life, and when it comes to preserving metabolic health, because as we've talked about on this podcast at length, about 60 to 80% of the post meal glucose is actually deposited within your skeletal muscle. So if you don't have much muscle to begin with and you start to eat a high glycemic index diet, maybe you go out over Mother's Day weekend and have some burgers or some french fries or soda or whatever, if there's no muscle for that post meal glucose to go into, uh, where is it going to go? It's going to get converted by way of de novo lipogenesis into fat, which is problematic, my friends. So this, I think, is very important. Of course, as you know, I'm very biased. I love exercise. I love, you know, lifting weights. I think all of us should walk, move more, and lift more, and bake in resistance training. But let's get into the nitty-gritty details here. I'm not going to lose you in the science, I promise. And I want to share with you on the screen here uh, exactly sort of this balance, this pivot between muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein degradation. Now, the 50,000-foot view here is that when you become insulin resistant, now, a lot of us, there's insulin resistance is a spectrum. Just because you have not yet been diagnosed with prediabetes does not mean you have zero sort of futures of insulin resistance, okay? So it's a spectrum. A lot of us are somewhere maybe in the middle, uh, as we've talked about before, about 83% of American adults suffer from some sort of insulin resistance and have some futures of poor metabolic health. So again, this conversation is applicable to most adults and unfortunately, a lot of children and a growing body of children now. So it's very applicable. And continue on here and talk about, again, these details about how insulin resistance favors muscle protein catabolism. It pivots the spectrum, as you can see. You know, um, we're, we should always be sort of in the middle here. In the post-exercise window, maybe you're breaking down the muscles that you utilized. Now, now, after a meal, you pivot more to muscle protein synthesis. But as your glucose handling and metabolic health declines, your body, through the mechanisms that we're going to dive into, favor muscle protein catabolism at the expense of muscle protein synthesis. So it favors muscle wasting. So I want to continue on here. But first, friends, just a quick thank you for being here. It's Mike Mutzel. I'm really honored. I'm always grateful that you're here. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for leaving a comment below. Your comments, your engagement really help videos like this and help laymen understand the scientific research. There's a huge sort of divide here between what scientists are actually publishing and discovering in academia and what the average person knows. So if you can share this video with a friend and encourage them to start doing some sort of resistance training, incorporate more weightlifting, uh, walking, some sort of exercise into their lifestyle, that would be very grateful. Also, my friends, we have now received, I think, 135 some odd reviews of the new electrolyte sticks. That is a phenomenal companion for you folks that exercise. So if you do yoga, if you garden, if you have a physically demanding job, a lot of people have reported 
receiving great benefits from the electrolyte sticks because it not only features real salt, a lot of electrolytes out there, sorry to break the news to you, it's USP sodium, probably imported from China or who knows where else. You're getting real salt, you're getting chelated minerals, plus you're getting taurine and creatine that not only help uh, with supporting healthy hydration, but can help support athletic performance. So definitely check it out. Use the coupon code podcast to save over at myoscience.com. That's myoscience with an X. M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, myoscience.com. Use the coupon code podcast to save. Okay, so let's get into the details. In the next 10 minutes here, I want to just make this short and sweet, but help you to sort of indelibly ink these concepts into your mind. And again, the big take home here is insulin resistance is synonymous with muscle wasting. Really big no-no, especially as you get over the age of 60, you need that lean mass to keep yourself living independently, to stay out of a nursing home, to prevent breaking the hip and landing and having an acceleration of cognitive decline and, and decreased lifespan, okay? So various studies show that muscle is largely impacted in a negative way by insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. And I go on to say that poor metabolic health, that is insulin resistance, activates these atrophy genes called atrogenes. And um, this is a big future, and it creates this vicious cycle. So uh, this is a phenomenal review. You can find this for free online. I will link it below. It was actually just published in Springer in March of this year. So this is a new paper, uh, and I think it's uncovering new research to me. Again, anytime I read a research article and I learn something, I feel compelled to make a video like this so that you, too, can get access to this information. Okay. But I think the big, you know, big picture, why should you care? And We've already talked about it, but let's just solidify everything that we talked about. As you age, you become more insulin resistant. Anyway, as you age, you naturally lose muscle mass. So we should address sort of this two-pronged approach, meaning that how you approach your diet, your lifestyle, your exercise should focus on really two, a bunch of different things, preserving the health of your brain and your heart and all that, but supporting metabolic health and, and preventing muscle loss with aging. And, and again, because this is a vicious cycle. Let me break that down. What does that mean? This is a vicious cycle. Well, if you become insulin resistant because you're not exercising, you're sitting a lot all day, you're not doing your walking, and you're eating a diet enriched in processed foods, hyper palatable processed junk food, okay, you get a little more, more insulin resistance. So you start to catabolize skeletal muscle. By the time you're 50 or 60, you don't have much muscle anyway. And so you become more metabolically unhealthy, hyperinsulinemic. And so that is accelerating atherosclerosis, that's, which is the process of heart disease. That's accelerating cancer. I just met a gentleman, 47 years old, not that much older than me. He was helping me with my car and he had a, a bag for all of his chemotherapy on. And it was, he has a port that goes right into a, a major vessel here to constantly infuse and drip chemotherapy. He's 47. And uh, you know, if you look at this guy, he looks way older than 47. And he has, because he has poor metabolic health, he's been eating processed food his entire life, my friends. And part of that, he, had, he basically had no muscle. And the reason why I started to talk to him about what was this bag with this clear tube that was visibly going into his shirt, I said, if you don't mind me asking, sir, what was that? He's like, well, it's, it's chemo. I have rectal cancer. And, but he couldn't lift the car tire into my truck. Uh, I had to get new tires. Uh, and it was really hard for him. His face was getting red and all this. And, and so one, again, this is just an end of one example, but we've seen this cachexia, muscle loss, muscle wasting. Uh, this, this is linked with all these conditions. So this is really apropos and timely. Uh, cancer is, is a major uh, killer. So again, if you're over the age of 40, get your colonoscopy, friends, every couple of years. Like a lot of this colon cancer can be prevented, obviously with diet, exercise, nutrition, but also uh, screening, okay? So we know that muscle supports metabolic health, as we talked about in the intro. About 80% of the post meal glucose is actually deposited in your muscle. So if you have insulin resistant muscle, you have low muscle mass, that glucose is gonna have nowhere to go. So you have the cheat meal, you're out with family, holidays, you know, we have a lot of things coming up with regards to summer. You know, if that glucose has nowhere to go, guess what happens? It gets converted to fat, which is not good. Okay. So here's a direct quote. I think this, my friends, is very important. Of the histological futures of diabetic sarcopenia are loss of muscle mass and alteration of the fiber type and characteristics similar to the changes in age-related sarcopenia. And so again, on the, on the cellular level, uh, sort of in physiology, we talk about the histology. So if you were to look at the muscle cells of a diabetic, maybe that's say in their 40s, and compare the muscle cells of say 
someone in their 60s or 70s who has age-related muscle loss or sarcopenia, there's almost indistinguishable futures between these two individuals because of the metabolic environment that is created by the insulin resistance or the diabetes, okay? So that, I think, is really important. So it, it goes above and beyond just... Well, you don't want diabetes because you don't want to have to take insulin. It's like, well, you don't want diabetes because it's going to accelerate the decline of your life, expect, you know, your, your quality of life, right? Quality adjusted life years because you can't move well. You're going to have achy joints. You're going to be tired. You're going to be weak and so forth. And it has to do with all sorts of details that are beyond the scope of this conversation with the uh, extracellular matrix within the muscle itself, Okay. And again, this image, I think, does a great job of talking about all the different nuances, the chronic low-grade inflammation that you can see here on the upper right. You have uh, all these different intracellular signaling molecules. It turns out that insulin resistance leads to a decline of mTOR activation in the muscle itself. So we've heard a lot about mTOR being problematic. It's really more problematic within the fat cells and the immune system, but probably not within the muscle tissue uh, be because... We know that mTOR is involved in muscle protein synthesis, and there is a decline in muscle protein synthesis in the insulin-resistant uh, muscle tissue. So uh, really important stuff here. So some more quotes. This to me I think is so fascinating, and I don't know why I get excited about it, but I think you might get excited about it as well. So the scientists want to say, normally the muscle progenitor cells, there's, these are called the satellite cells, and another progenitor cell. So these are like stem cells within your muscle. It's called the fibroadipogenic progenitor, FAP. Okay. So these stem cells uh, can be influenced to differentiate into fat cells. And it turns out that insulin resistance creates this imbalance that pivots these stem cells, these satellite cells within the muscle to actually take on a adipogenic-like structure or future, uh, which is just amazing. Uh, I mean, it's, it's sad. It's crazy. But you think about, well, how do you get marbled muscle? Well, we think, oh, you're insulin resistant. You're over. Well, part of it could be that these stem cells are being influenced by this metabolic environment of insulin resistance that is causing these your muscles to literally get converted into marbled meat, which is absolutely uh, insane. So the scientists say, normally the muscle progenitor cells, the satellite cells, uh, have an immense role in skeletal muscle plasticity and so forth, uh, but that plasticity is negatively affected by the diabetes and the insulin resistance and causes these uh, cells to then uh, shift into more of an adipocyte-like function, okay? So basically, um, what happens is your muscles constantly churning and turning over, right? You go exercise, you go move some things, you go garden, you know, you stimulate your muscles. There's a lot of like turnover, right? And that's where these stem cells come in and they help to re repair and they're, they're involved in the regeneration of this. So about 0.1% of all of your muscle tissue is turning over at any point in time. This accounts for, for someone who's highly muscled, maybe a Sean Baker who's 240 pounds or something, about a pound of muscle per day is turned over. So your muscle cells are constantly turning over and those progenitor stem cells are involved in the maintenance and the regeneration of your muscles. We hear a lot about regenerative medicine, right? Botox and stem cells and peptides and so forth. Well, exercise in a sense and being insulin sensitive is a big part of regenerative medicine with regards to your muscle tissue because your muscles regenerating. But if you're insulin resistant, that regeneration is impaired because what happens is the turnover is diminished or declined. And then what happens is those stem cells, instead of being turned over to make new muscle cells, they're more like fat cells or adipocytes, which is absolutely insane. So this is why I think I want to highlight this. The, the researchers say muscle is the most active site of protein metabolic processes in the body. So protein is very important. Uh, there's many ways to skin a cat. If you want to be a vegan or vegetarian, whatever, um, fine by me if and only if you can get sufficient protein to maintain this highly protein demanding process of muscle regeneration. So that's very important to understand that uh, amino acids are, are very important and how you can probably get better gains from exercise and resistance training is to become more insulin sensitive. Uh, because again, all these different futures. And so if you're a hard gainer, if you're someone who's sort of skinny and you go work out, but you look in the mirror and you're like, I don't look like I even work out or exercise. 
Okay, also focus on your diet and your feeding fasting windows and the types of foods that you're eating. Perhaps there's some sort of background insulin resistance that is impacting your sort of gains or progress in the gym. So this is a, a connection here. And although this paper doesn't specifically go into hypertrophy and athletic performance, I think there is some, some sort of ways that we can triangulate uh, there as well. Okay, so finishing off here, I think one of the other ways that insulin resistance can impair or accelerate muscle atrophy is by this smoldering low-grade background inflammation. Uh, there's a little molecular switch. It's a transcription factor known as NF-kappa-B, nuclear factor kappa-beta, and this is involved in the upregulation of these so-called atrophy genes or these atrogenes uh, that, that accelerate muscle wasting. So that's part of it. And they go on to say, just to sort of summarize here, at the gene level, there are many different genes that are involved in muscle atrophy, collectively known as atrogenes. The expression of these genes is activated by this complex thing called FOXO1 and so forth. And this is actually an atrophy-related transcription factor. Uh, and these genes are products and parts of a ubiquitin proteasome uh, system. And basically, they say patients with type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance uh, were noted to have and display an upregulation of these atrogenes, and specifically the FOXO. And so this is involved in accelerated muscle protein catabolism. So to sort of summarize here, insulin resistance is part and parcel with muscle atrophy. So if you're having a hard time gaining muscle or getting progress from the gym, you also need to focus on ways to improve insulin sensitivity. Things that come to mind, compressing your feeding window, very simple way to do this. Eat when the sun's out, stop eating when it's dark. Very simple. Eat less processed food. If it comes in a box bag or a can, simply don't eat it. Make your food from scratch. Eat mindfully. The fact of eating mindfully, just chewing your food, um, cooking the food, the smells, the aromas, all of that, they signal or amplify this cephalic phase of digestion that is so important for the post-meal processing of the food that you're eating. It often gets under-recognized, but it's very important. We can focus on eating less highly processed carbohydrates. Not everyone responds sort of uh, in a homogenous way to a ketogenic or low-carb diet. There's some people that are hyper-responders, some people that do well with carbohydrates. You know, work on whatever works for you. Uh, but we can all sort of agree that eating hyperpalatable junk food is not a good idea. Uh, go for a walk after a meal. That's a great way to just drop that glucose down and improve your body's uh, glucose dynamics. Focus on your sleep and circadian rhythms. You know, you could be eating the best diet in the world, but if you're inside all day, if you're not getting your retinas exposed and your retina, you know, to, to sunlight and so forth, that's not good. Getting off screens at night. Studies have actually shown that people that are on screens actually have impaired glucose tolerance the next day. This is really important, getting a good night's sleep. And of course, stimulate your muscles by way of exercise. Try to hit every major muscle one day per week and, and, and go for walks. So um, that's it, my friends. I will link this amazing article in the show notes below. You have the timestamps below that hopefully will help you. And as always, if you found this helpful, please share this with a friend or family member. Leave us some feedback over in iTunes. That goes a long way. And thank you for leaving a, a comment here on YouTube. And hope you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you all on a future episode down the road. Bye now.